Ready? Why don't we get started? Everybody likes to take a holiday Everybody likes to take a rest Spending time together with the family Sharing lots of love and happiness Come on, ring those bells like the Christmas tree Jesus is the King, born for you and me Come on, ring those bells, everybody say Jesus, we remember this your birthday Celebrations come because of something good Celebrations we love to recall Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem The greatest celebration of them all Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say, Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Yep, the birthday of Jesus. In spite of all the songs about Santa and snowmen and even blue Christmases. <laughs> Most people know that Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, what they think about who exactly Jesus is, now that's a different matter. Some think he's just a fictional character made up by Christians. Others think he's just a great teacher, although a misguided one. Then to some, he's just a couple of words to use when they're swearing. But now as to the reality of his existence, even first century writers who did not follow him as Lord and Savior or believe his claims to be the Son of God still acknowledged his existence. Romans like Tacitus and Pliny the Younger, Greeks like Lucian, and even non-believing Jews like Josephus. They all in unison reported that he was a popular teacher, that he did miracles, one of them called it magic, that he was executed by the Romans and that his followers claimed that he had risen from the dead and worshipped him as God. This was secular writings. Well, obviously he's not just a myth then. Obviously he's a man who walked across the pages of history and had such an effect upon mankind that we actually number our years according to the birth of Jesus. Like 2023 AD, of course you change it to CE and somehow it's supposed to take Jesus out of it, but Jesus is the reference point for what year it is. Well, whether you call it the year of our Lord, you know, AD, or whether you call it common era, CE, the point is, his birth affects what year we call it. Well, beside that, though, is he really that important? Well, the answer is yes. In fact, your eternal destiny is determined by who you think Jesus really is. Is he just a myth? Is he just a man? Or is he master and savior? So at Christmas time, each person needs to ask himself the question, what child is this? Child is this holy to 
Bible says that before he came to earth as a little baby that Jesus actually existed in eternity past the book of Hebrews starts out by saying that through Jesus God made the world how did he make it he spoke it into existence simply saying things like let there be light let the waters divide and the dry land appear and more than that, let us make man in our image after our likeness. That's one of the reasons that the Apostle John called Jesus the Word, because of his speaking the worlds into existence. But also the night before he was crucified, Philip said, Show us the Father and it will suffice us. And Jesus said, Have I been with you so long that you don't understand? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And then he had a group of unbelieving Jewish leadership around him and he spoke about Abraham rejoicing to see his day and Abraham had been born 2,000 years before Jesus. They said, uh, you're not yet 50 years old, how would you know Abraham? And Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. And that's why John in the beginning of his gospel said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and then speaking of Christmas John 1 14 he said the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory isn't it interesting that multitudes of babies have someday become kings but only in one instance has a king become a baby. Let's sing together with the band, Hark the Herald. And note, word of the Father now in flesh appearing. That's really significant to who Jesus is. God bless you. Hark the Herald, angel sing glory to the newborn king. God in sin is reckless Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic calls proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Heaven adore Christ the everlasting Lord Wait in time behold him come offspring of a virgin's 
veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hailed the incarnate deity, priestess men with men to dwell, Jesus of Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Son of righteousness, and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. God gave us the Bible by speaking to and through the nation of Israel. They were his witnesses to the rest of the world that he was God, which he proved to them by doing things that only Almighty God could do. He also told them of man's purpose for existing, and that was to love and honor his creator, and of man's failure to do so, separating him from God, and of God's desire to bring man back. By taking on a human body and bearing on himself the punishment that man deserves, and then rising from the dead, he was able and willing to give everlasting life to all who trusted him as Lord and Savior. Now the Israelites were told through the prophets exactly what to expect about his birth and about his mission. In the book of Genesis, they were told that out of their 12 tribes that Jesus would come exclusively from the tribe of Judah. In the book of 2 Samuel, the prophet Nathan said that he would be a descendant of David, the second king of Israel, who was also from the tribe of Judah. The prophet Isaiah said that he would be virgin-born since he was God taking on flesh and that his nickname would be Emmanuel. Remember, God with us. The prophet Micah said that his place of birth would be in Bethlehem. That was the city where David had lived and been raised. Then God also told them through the prophets in Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, and Psalm 16 that Jesus would willingly be crucified for our sins and that he would rise on the third day. His mission was to do that very thing. And that was something that they did not grasp until afterward. Well, so in fulfillment of prophecy in the first century, the angel Gabriel appeared to a virgin by the name of Mary. And she was engaged to a man from the tribe of Judah and a descendant of David and the angel told her that by a miraculous act of the Holy Spirit, she would conceive a son, and he would be the Savior of the world and reign forever. The angel also appeared to her fiancé, Joseph, and told of Jesus' virgin birth, and that he was to give him the name Jesus, because that name means the Lord is salvation. But what about the prophesied birthplace? They weren't from Bethlehem. But God always fulfills his prophecies. So he saw to it that a census was going to be ordered and that Joseph and Mary would have to travel to the city where David had been raised and register there since Joseph was a descendant of David and Mary was due and the baby was born in Bethlehem just like the prophet said. Now we know that according to the Bible he was born in a stable and laid in a manger which was a feeding trough. Was it because simply that there was no room in the inn or was God saying something? In his ministry on earth, Jesus called himself the bread of life that came down from heaven and if anyone ate of that bread, he would live forever. The name Bethlehem means house of bread. And John 1.12, the apostle John said, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become children of God. 
God was saying that a person must personally, by faith, accept Jesus into his heart to live spiritually. Just like he would receive food into his body to live physically. Jesus said after his resurrection, speaking of receiving him into your heart, he said, I stand at the door and I knock. And if anyone opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him. We also know that in the field outside of Bethlehem there were shepherds watching their flocks and an angel appeared to them of all people, why shepherds? To announce that a Savior had been born and that he was the long-awaited Messiah and that he was the Lord, meaning that he was God. Jesus called himself the good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. He also said that he had other sheep that he would add to the flock. That's Gentiles. I'm grateful for that. That's you and me. The Bible says that the shepherds were told that he'd be wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Now they knew where all of the stables in the area were and so they went looking for Jesus and they found him and they worshipped him and they proclaimed him. Let's join Lori in singing, O Come All Ye Faithful. About 600 years before Christ, the Jews were exiled to Babylon because of their failure to worship and proclaim the Lord as the one true God. Now among the exiles was a young man named Daniel who later served for many years as a high-ranking official to the Babylonians and then later to the Persians. Now there's no doubt that Daniel and other devout Jews shared the truth about God and about his prophecies about the Messiah, the Christ. One of those prophecies was from the book of Numbers, chapter 24, that said a special star would be involved in the birth of the Messiah. Now the Magi from that area, and they were also called wise men, were observers of the stars. And they noticed a new one. Apparently some of them were worshipers of God and were excited at the appearance of this new star. So they gathered their supplies and their gifts and they headed to Jerusalem. By the time they arrived, Jesus was likely a toddler 
maybe as old as two and living in a house. Now they caused a great disturbance in Jerusalem when they started asking, where's the king of the Jews that they had seen his star and wanted to come worship him? This aroused jealousy and fear in the heart of their earthly king, Herod. And he wanted to find this perceived rival and put him to death. So he lied, saying that he also wanted to worship Jesus and asked the Jewish leadership for the location of Jesus' birth. The leadership answered him with the prophecy of Micah 5.2. Now they only quoted the first part of the verse. Here it is in its entirety, a clear statement that the Messiah, the Christ, would be God in the flesh. Listen to Micah 5.2. But as for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth from me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from days of eternity. Well, with the aid of the star, the Magi found Jesus and Herod didn't and when they arrived at the house they bowed and worshipped and presented gifts frankincense gold and myrrh the interesting thing about myrrh was that it wasn't only a perfume used on special occasions like weddings but it was also used in burial wrappings to mask the odor of decay after Jesus willingly gave himself to be crucified, they wrapped him in strips of cloth, just like they did at his birth. But this time with a mixture of aloe vera and myrrh. Not understanding that he would not need that, because he was going to rise, just like he said he would. Now his birth was the beginning of his mission, to seek and save precious people who were lost to him because of sin. He said that he would lay his life down for us and then take it up again. And that's exactly what he did. Now, he's our risen Lord. He came at Christmas, but his purpose was Easter. Listen prayerfully to the band. <laughs> Has its cradle where a baby cried, and the lantern shadow showed him crucified. Did he foresee darkly his life's really lost? Christmas has its cradle. As its cradle, shepherds came to see little son of Mary, Lamb of God to be. Had his father warned him, none would grant him room. Then the Christmas cradle. As its cradle, wise men came to bring myrrh and gold and dances, offering for a king. 
You're alone, stayed with Him. That's one for this From the Christmas cradle into His Easter. Instead, you sent Jesus to come on mission to seek and save that which is lost. Father, we must really be precious to you for Jesus to go to the trouble to leave all of that glory and majesty, live as a poor man, willingly go to the cross, lay his life down and take it up again just so he could have us back. Lord, we worship you. We love you. And we'll forever praise you for what you did for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, the favorite Christmas carol of Americans is Silent Night. I'd like to ask you to join the band in singing two verses of that, and then we'll be dismissed. God bless you.